Are you addicted to catfishing? Hi, my name is Luke Vu, PhD. I'm a clinical psychologist, mental health expert, helping young men overcome digital addiction, depression, and anxiety. For this episode, I think we're going to have a mini disclaimer before our usual one. In no way, shape, or form do I or this channel endorse or encourage catfishing. We're simply trying to pull back the curtain from the other side. Now for the main disclaimer. I'm not just psych, this isn't treatment. And if you need a psych, you should find a registered, qualified psychologist in your area. So what is catfishing? Catfishing refers to impersonating another person online to engage in a relationship or friendship with another individual. Catfishing activities often involve impersonation, deception, and manipulation for personal gain. However, I'm going to make a quick distinction between deception for financial or property gain, aka scamming, and actual catfishing for personal and social gain. In my clinical practice, I often don't see scammer types, but I do see individuals who impersonate and engage in online sexual interactions via chatting, webcamming, and messages. What are some of the reasons why people catfish? Technically, there's nothing illegal about catfishing another adult. Super illegal to catfish a child, don't do that. For some doing the catfishing, they're also likely to experience guilt, shame, and poor self-worth. We can break down the main reasons into subsequent parts. Control and power. Some catfishers know their target and will actively seek to manipulate the relationship for a particular purpose. Sometimes it's revenge or control. Other times the intentions are less malicious, such as companionships or a pseudo-friendship. Some patients catfish because they fear rejection or have low self-worth, and catfishing allows them to exaggerate their positive traits to be liked by their target. Sexual exploration. For some, impersonating someone online allows them to explore their desires without excessive judgment and with a degree of safety. You might find a supportive community that encourages you to express your sexual fantasies. Sometimes this might turn into your primary way to express your sexual desires and fantasies. Excitement and taboo. The online disinhibition effect and anonymity can embolden some users to explore sexual categories or activities that might be taboo or shameful if their real identities were used. In addition, having someone else encourage and enhance the sexual experience will often increase the novelty and the arousal of the taboo category. Escapism Because sexual catfishing is engaging, exciting, and novel, it can become a means to escape from negative emotions or dissatisfaction from real life. Sometimes this leads to further avoidance of problems, and those problems tend to grow. This is known as experiential avoidance. Unmet sexual needs. Some patients who catfish are in relationships but have significant difficulty with expressing, negotiating, and fulfilling their sexual needs. In an indirect way, they see catfishing as a way to increase the interactivity of their pornography by posing as the same gender or cross gender personas and participating in sexting and webcam sex. So, where is the line when you can become addicted to it? One of the easiest ways to check if your use is heading towards addiction is to check if your use is regulated. Ask yourself, does the activity get in the way of other areas of your life? Do you find yourself being compelled to engage in catfishing during important activities such as spending time with your partner or at work where the consequences are high? That's a sign that it's heading towards problematic use. Another question you should ask yourself is are you using catfishing to repeatedly avoid the experience of negative emotions? Is catfishing your crutch for relationship and job dissatisfaction? Are you using it to escape from something? What happens when you keep catfishing for a long time? And how can catfishing become harmful to the person carrying it out? Although the other way is quite obvious, we often overlook that catfishing is harmful to the catfisher as well. Catfishing can affect your self-esteem and self-worth by reinforcing your internal message that you aren't good enough or aren't attractive enough to pursue meaningful real-life relationships. It also diverts precious energy and time away from working on your own weaknesses and goals. If you are in a relationship, catfishing as a form of sexual expression will impair your ability to have a healthy dialogue with your partner about your sexual interests and needs. It might reduce your motivation to explore and discover sexual interests with your partner that you find mutually agreeable and bonding. Essentially, you are procrastinating learning a vital life skill for maintaining relationships. For some, they might feel that their actions are inconsistent with their personal values of integrity and trust. They would also have to engage in deception with their partner as well to keep their activity hidden. 
Sometimes they regret leading on a person or feel intense shame when they confess or are discovered. Ultimately, catfishing is an unhealthy crutch. So how do you get over catfishing? What are other healthier coping mechanisms? There's a short-term and a long-term solution. In the short-term, learn to regulate your behavior. Use a phase reduction approach and practice allocating time to the activity. As you reduce down, understand your urges and tactically manage them. Now check out the description for links to some previous videos that might help. Remember, you can have a diverse sexual experience. Catfishing is not and should not be the only way to express your sexuality. In the long term, if catfishing is a result of unmet sexual needs with your partner, you'll have to learn how to identify your unmet sexual needs and practice starting a dialogue where you can both explore your sexual desires in a safer way with your partner. If it's driven by experiential avoidance, identify what emotions are driving the catfishing. This could be low self-worth or low self-esteem, anxiety or depression. Work through your emotions and if you're having trouble, work with a mental health professional for some strategies. Except that you're going to have to disband the relationship. You can ghost out or you can phase it out, but there's no keeping it on the side. I really hope you found this useful. Don't forget to hit subscribe. I'm Luke Blue. Be kind, be you. Catch you next time.